Hello everyone, welcome to Spec eLearn, the online learning channel dedicated to chemical engineers. Types of process control system. In this video course, you will learn open loop control system, closed loop or feedback control system, feed forward control system, feedback and feed forward combined control system. Please subscribe to the channel. By subscribing, you will motivate us to produce more knowledgeable video content for you. So please subscribe now before you forget. Process plants use several control methods to regulate the process to achieve the desired stability and optimum performance. Process control can be classified based on the desired action you need. Accordingly, it is classified into open loop control and closed loop control. We will discuss these two systems one by one with examples. First, open loop control. An open loop control system is also known as non-feedback control system. An open loop control system acts completely on the basis of input and output has no effect on the control action. They do not monitor the process output variable. For example, the process can be a furnace where the output variable is temperature. The input could be the fuel flow rate. The final control element is the fuel valve. The controller through electronic signal regulates the fuel valves. This figure illustrates the block diagram showing the blocks of a open loop control system. The controller is provided with the set point. Based on the difference between the set point and the actual value, the controller sends a signal to the actuator, which is the final control element, which acts to regulate the manipulated variable to the process. The open loop control system will not take any corrective action if the process variable increases or decreases. The open loop control system is explained in this figure with the process fired heater, which is a furnace. The desired process variable is the process gas outlet temperature. The fuel gas pressure controller acts on the fuel gas pressure control valve to maintain the pressure of the fuel to the furnace but it has no feedback signal coming to it from the process gas temperature measured at the outlet of the heater. The disadvantages of open loop system is that it is insensitive to the process disturbances or deviations and its inability to correct the deviations in the process output parameter. When do we choose a open loop system? A open loop system is better when cost is a deciding factor. It is low cost solution as it is inexpensive. When the output does not change at all, a process disturbances are extremely rare. No quantitative measurement is possible as with inaccessible processes. Closed loop control. The key difference between the open loop and closed loop control system is the feedback.
A closed loop control system looks at the current output and alters to the desired condition. This control system is also known as feedback control system. The control action in the closed loop system is based on the output. Thus, feedback control system is a system whose output is controlled using its measured variable as a feedback signal. Closed loop systems are expensive. They are still less expensive than using human controllers who manually adjust a set point. Closed loop or feedback control system has several advantages that include a process can be maintained at its set point within a narrow range. Corrective actions to process disturbances are automated. Better quality of products. This figure illustrates a block diagram showing the blocks of a closed loop control system. In most cases, the error term is used to calculate the control output. Error equals PV minus SP, where PV is the process value and SV is the set point. The variable that the control valve regulates is called the manipulated variable. This could be feed flow or reflux flow in the case of a distillation column or cooling water or steam or any other utility flow rate which has an impact on the process variable. Let us now look at an example of closed loop control. Shown in this figure is a batch reactor where an exothermic reaction is taking place. The reactor temperature is an important operating parameter. The operating temperature is set at 130 degrees centigrade. The temperature indicator cam controller receives a measurement signal from the temperature indicator and combines with the set point and produces error signal. Depending on the magnitude of the error signal, an output signal is generated by the controller as sent to the final control element TCV, which regulates the cooling water to the heat exchanger. This control action causes the temperature of the reactor to move closer to the set point. Note the response of the TCV is reflected in the reactor temperature, which is a measured variable. The control action is based on the output signal from the temperature indicator. The occurrence of a disturbance and the control system response is illustrated in this sketch. The disturbance could be the feed rate reduction or decrease in feed supply pressure, which affects the reactor temperature. In a open loop control system with no feedback, the temperature decreases. If no manual action is taken, the temperature will continue to decrease. In the feedback control, the cooling water control valve will close and bring the temperature close to the set point. The measured process variable is used to initiate the control action. The control action is error driven. The closed loop control, also called the feedback control, is the most common type of control used in the process industry for process control. Having understood with the example the closed loop control, let us now get an insight into another type of process control called feed forward control. Feed forward control is a control system that foresees a disturbance and initiates a control action before the disturbance can impact the process variable. The process variable is not used in the control action. 
in that sense it is like a open loop control the low disturbances is variables that influence the process these disturbances causes the key process parameters to vary from stable operating point an inherent weakness of the feedback control system is that it can never be proactive the best it can do is to react to detect disturbances in the key process variables this makes deviation from the set point inevitable even if only for a short period of time feed forward addresses this problem by different approach basing the final control action on the states of load variables rather than the process variable in other words feed forward control monitors the load variables affecting the process and decides how to compensate ahead of time before the process variables deviate from the set point for feed forward control to work effectively the user must have a mathematical understanding of how the load disturbances or variables will impact the key process variable in feed forward control the major load variables are fed into a mathematical model to calculate the manipulated variable mv required to control the set point your feed forward control system is illustrated in the form of a block diagram in this figure note the measured process variable pv is not used as a feedback signal in the controller instead load variables are fed to the controller so the controller action is in response to the variation in load disturbances to the process this is a key difference in industries feed forward control system is usually not implemented alone instead it is used in combination with feedback control the combination works well when there are several load variables that will impact the manipulated variable regulated by the final control element in other words it takes into account the disturbances emanating from the sources and adjusts the manipulated variable combination of feed forward and feedback control feed forward and feedback control actions are often used in combination in several individual processes the feed forward element provide rapid response and the feedback element provides the remaining response accurately acting on the error this is a block diagram showing the blocks of a combined feed forward and feedback control system it consists of two controllers one feed forward controller which acts on the plan load disturbances and a feedback controller which acts on the error due to changes in measured process variable this figure is an illustration of feedback and feed forward combination control used in a process fed heater the process gas outlet temperature is measured and sent to a temperature controller which generates an output in terms of the amount of fuel required this output signal or command is sent to the fuel gas flow control wall fic the pic is a feedback controller with fuel flow gas pressure as set point value p is generates an output 
that is compared with feed forward correction and send a command to flow control valve. Feed forward correction acts as warning signal and faster response. The heat outlet temperature is influenced by the amount of fuel burnt and the heating value, assuming the heat to process input. Assuming all other parameters, example, heating value, etc., are constant, the controlling fuel flow gives a direct control on the heat input to the furnace. If furnace feed conditions such as flow and temperature are not constant, the combined control system of feed forward and feedback control would be a better option. Several petrochemical processes use this mode of control in their process heaters of late. Another application of feed forward and feedback control combo is in the boiler steam drum level control. The stability and responsiveness of the boiler steam drum level control can be maximized with this concept. The method used to control boiler steam drum level is to feed forward the steam flow to the level PID loop and cascade the output of that loop to the set point of boiler feed water flow control loop. This arrangement is also called three element level control. The boiler level control scheme is illustrated in this sketch. The level controller has a set point of say 50%. The LIC is feed forwarded with the steam flow rate exiting the boiler steam drum. The LIC then generates an output and sends it as a set point to the boiler feed water flow controller, which regulates the flow of boiler feed water to the boiler through the flow control valve. This way, any variation of steam flow due to plant load changes such as the heat duty on the steam generator is sensed faster and the LAC responds quickly to adjust the set point and control the boiler feed, of feed water flow to the boiler. In the above two examples illustrated, the control philosophy used is also called three element level control, simply called 3E. Please subscribe to our channel and get updates on the upcoming courses by pressing the subscribe button. It will motivate us to produce free knowledge rich video content for you. With this we have come to the end of the presentation. Please give your comments if any about this course after you finished viewing this video. Share with your friends and colleagues to reach out to large number of career oriented professional students. Thank you for watching.